Yeah, I think it's about time that I talk about my uh, motion platform. I've had it about six months now, probably a little bit longer. Uh, it's actually the first uh, piece of uh, simulation equipment that I bought, strangely enough, for, for a wheel. Uh, but uh, it got me into sim racing. Uh, I love it. This is a DF Reality uh, P3. Started out as a P2. Uh, I want to talk about those platforms a little bit, my experience with them and also the 6DOF platform, which I don't have as much experience with, but uh, I maybe help you decide which platform is right for you. Uh, the TLDR of this is, I absolutely love my platform. Uh, you should get one if you can. They start out, the six, the two DOF platforms start out with $1,600 to ship to the States. Uh, if, if that's something you wanna, uh, amount you wanna invest in your sim racing, get one. Uh, they're absolutely worth it. Now let's go to the longer version of that and talk about uh, my platform and my experience. I started out with a P2, so uh, it was a two-tier platform. Uh, I absolutely loved it. I've had problems with it, uh, but those are problems which uh, I feel would have been potentially uh, ruined, ruined it for me if not for DOF reality and the fantastic support. They helped me through the problems, uh, both the problems that I had in the beginning with the DOF, uh, DOF 2, 2 DOF platform, uh, and also when I upgraded to P3, I had some issues with that. It was a false keyboard, but absolutely fantastic support. Uh, they went above and beyond to help me, and so have they done for a lot of other customers for, for this platform. And you need to keep in mind when you're buying a, a motion platform, this is somewhat emerging technology and uh, also quite a niche market because uh, not everyone has the room for something like this in the home. Yeah. So, so it's not going to be a plug and play experience in most cases. Yeah. And that's why it's, I think it's important to go with someone that has fantastic support like DOF. Yeah. And it doesn't really just end with them. Uh, with the hardware that they provide, because the software that drives the platform is, is from SRS, who also have uh, a Sim Racing Studio, who also have fantastic support. And uh, and then you have a huge community of owners for these platforms, because they are, uh, they are uh, um, at a good price point, so a lot of people have bought them, and there's a good community that helps each other uh, support them. And also to uh, tune them, right? Tune them for the games, tune them for the cars, tune them for the flames that you wanna wanna uh, experience in these platforms. Because that that is very important also to get the tuning right of uh, of uh, the experience. Now, <clears throat> so, talking a little bit more about the tuning. Will this make you seasick? Maybe, quite possibly. It can make me seasick. Uh, and I used to be a sailor, so there is that. But the platform tends to make me seasick when the tunings are off. So when I dial it, get the uh, tuning dialed in for the platform, so it's not giving me uh, unrealistic movement or, or like a silly amount of G-force emulation, then uh, I do not get sick, seasick in the, the platform. Uh, it just adds to the immersion uh, and I enjoy, thoroughly enjoy the experience. So if you do get one of these platforms or you try it out somewhere else and you get a little bit seasick, try out configs from, from uh, 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 people that have more experience with these uh, or, and maybe try, try and uh, tone down the sway of the platform and tone down the G-force effects. I think that would help a lot. Uh, anyway, back to the, uh, the platform itself. Uh, as I said, this started out as a, uh, a P2, so a DO, uh, to the platform, which means it has two directions of movement, right? Uh, this platform has most two tier platforms. Uh, it, uh, <clears throat> it's a balancing platform. So it's basically it balances on a huge jump. There's a thing that it balances on. It has two motors that can move it this direction or this direction. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But that is enough for most of the movement that you need to get uh, uh, more immersion and fun in your in your in your driving games. Uh, the third axis that I've built this platform for is the uh, 
traction loss system. It basically is a platform that you put this platform on top of, uh, which allows the platform to to uh, uh, swing like uh, uh, sideways. The rear end can swing swing around. Uh, and that uh, that helps, uh, especially in, in games like uh, this, as uh, Corsa Competizione and other street games, when you lose traction on the rear wheels, you feel it immediately. And this uh, may often uh, uh, counter steer and uh, uh, and regain control before for a completely lose it in these. Uh, it doesn't kick in that often though. I mean, uh, it, it happens more when I'm driving a new car that I'm not used to or, or a track that I'm not used to. Uh, but, uh, but between that, it doesn't really, I don't lose that much control of the rear end. So, so it doesn't kick in that often. Uh, but when it does, it, it is very helpful. Now you'd think it uh, would add to a whole lot to the immersion in like rally games. I don't feel that rally games, the car tends to be a little bit loose in the rear end. So uh, getting a little bit more loose or a little bit less loose, uh, it may be adding to a, the immersion on a level that I'm not recognizing like consciously, uh, but it's not, don't immediately recognize it like on a, a street game like this where where I feel that the rear end is slipping. Uh, so that said, I feel that that traction loss system is probably adding less than 10% of the immersion. So uh, a 2 of system is plenty. There's no reason not to get one. Now that I have a traction loss, I like it, I'm going to keep it. But uh, if I'd known this before, uh, I would probably have stuck with the uh, 2 tier for much longer. Uh, it is a considerable additional expense to add that because it is kind of a platform you put underneath your, underneath your platform. Uh, 2DF will give you 90% of the movement, 90% of the immersion, probably more. Uh, and and those platforms start out at like $1,600 shipped to the US, which is which isn't a whole lot for, for motion platforms. If, if you looked around on uh, pricing on motion platforms, they are usually in the tens of thousands of dollars. And this is, really good pricing yeah. and you get a lot for it uh, especially if you have for also the great support that they provide and the community that you get can get access to through like facebook the uh, the uh, uh uf reality builders page and other pages like it where there's a lot of people there willing to help you and have done some of the hard work for you in uh, creating the tuning profiles that make made the experience really uh, so yeah, uh, don't hold off, get one when you can. Uh, if you have a $1,600 Pro on a, uh, into your sim racing, this is a really good uh, use of that money. Uh, if you want to spend more, uh, absolutely go, go for it. Uh, the rear traction load is fun, it does add to it. So if uh, cost is not a concern, get it. Uh, the uh, This is a P rig, as I said before, that means Stands for professional, eight rigs stand for home. Um, they're not very specific on the difference between the two. They say that the, the P are for more like continuous use, longer use, like uh, in, I guess arcade settings. I don't think these are used in arcades at all, but that's sad if you want to do something silly like me, like add triple monitors on it, you may want to go with the bigger motors, which is the, uh, the P version, P variety. Uh, they, of course, don't recommend that you do this. Uh, if you do, uh, I have videos on some of the modifications that I've done on the rig. You can check those out. Uh, just be cognizant of the weight that you're adding on the front. Uh, it is tricky. Uh, I selected these monitors for their weight. They're pretty light, combined weight of all three monitors is less than, less than 30 pounds, which, which is less than uh, one direct drive wheel. Uh, of course, not quite comparable because I still have a wheel here. And, uh, still, you need to be uh, cognizant of that. When I added this monitor set up on, uh, at first it was very front heavy, I didn't balance it right. Uh, it took me a while to dial in the balancing, but once I got it right, super happy. You see some of my earlier videos when I didn't have it dialed in the balancing, the rig tend to like want to just go to one side and stay there. It's like very sluggish coming back. Uh, uh, even when I got the dial, uh, the balancing dialed in, it was still sluggish, uh, but that was fixed by adding dampeners to the rig. 
Uh, nowadays, I think all of the rigs from DOF Reality come uh, <clears throat> come with dampeners, so uh, that shouldn't be a concern. Uh, but anyway, just know that they, they don't recommend this, uh, and you don't need this, right? If you're just going to be running uh, in uh, VR, or you want to mount your monitors outside the rig, like a lot of people do, uh, then you can go with bigger monitors also, so that may be adding a different level of immersion. And, and uh, so, don't feel like you need to, but you, you can look at my videos if you want to go down that road. There's also a lot of people that have put like uh, uh, off the right 49 monitors on their rigs uh, with, good, with great success. Um, there's one more rig that I want to talk about from uh, uh, DOF, and that is the, the 6 DOF system. Uh, it has six motors, it has more direction of movement, uh, it uh, can go up and down also, which this one can't, it can only pivot. So, uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, DOF Reality have said themselves that if you're only going to be doing racing games, there is no really no reason for you to buy their most experienced the most expensive platform, which is the 6 DOF. Uh, the 3 DOF platforms are plenty and probably the best experience for a racing game. Now, I don't want to disagree with them, uh, especially since I've never tried the 6 DOF platform, but I do suspect that for rally games, it might add a little bit of extra immersion because you get that heave, uh, which you don't really get in uh, in uh, the 3 DOF because it's balancing on a huge jump, can never lift off the huge jump. So uh, it does a really good job of emulating like lift when you when you uh, get airborne, but I think it would probably be a little bit more immersive if it actually got a little bit airborne. That said, I don't know that for a fact. Uh, I'm speculating here. Uh, really, the driving force for you get going for a, a, a 6DF rather than 3DF is you want to with flight simulators, it's definitely going to add some uh, immersion to those very much more than it is going to driving games. It's also very refreshing to see a company uh, recommend their uh, well, people products uh, because they feel it's the right product for for that group, which is sim racing, right? Uh, can't recommend that company enough. Fantastic support. Uh, I would probably not still be sim racing. Definitely not an emotion rig if I hadn't been lucky enough to uh, uh, make my first sim rig idea of reality rig. But yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it for, for uh, my rant on how fantastic these rigs are. Uh, I may do another video at some point about other rigs which I have absolutely no experience with, uh, but there's all kinds of interesting things going on in. Uh, in the world of motion rigs today with, uh, with DIY rigs that people are building and company like, uh, companies like uh, DIY Reality that are starting out uh, and bringing really this technology to the, uh, to, to the consumer, to bring the price point down where it actually makes sense to uh, buy something like this just for your games, right? Uh, so, Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful uh, in uh, your decisions around motion rigs, what you want to get, when you want to get it, etc. Uh, if you do, uh, and if you do have comments or you feel I'm wrong in any way, please uh, feel free to uh, chime in in the comment sections. And uh, uh, a like and a subscribe is always welcome too. Uh, thanks again, and I'll uh, see you on the track.